While the modernization of a classic is clear in every aspect of Final Fantasy VII Remake, the original is still honored at every turn, complete with frame-for-frame -frame callbacks to the original cutscenes and beautiful preservations of Nobuo Uematsu's original themes. The nostalgia factor is strong, especially in the opening sequence and the first playable chapter, the bombing mission. The original opening begins with some low, atmospheric synths punctuated by haunting voices while we look at a long, long, honestly entirely too long shot of this field of stars. There's no identifiable melody, but if you listen closely, you can pick out the choral chatter. This then leads us into that iconic shot of Aerith's face looking up, surrounded by the eerie green glow of the live stream. This opening section isn't included on any soundtrack, and is treated more as a sound effect than music. But it's used to help set the tone of the game. There is a deeper mystery to the city, and Aerith seems to know what it is. The remake also takes time to give us a taste of what's to come before we begin the grand fanfare of the opening. But it takes a slightly different approach. The original track, Opening Bombing Mission, is one continuous piece that takes us through the opening movie to the first section of gameplay. The remake splits this idea into two pieces. They function the same way, but they've taken both ideas, Opening and Bombing Mission, and expanded on each. In place of the unsettling atmospheric space shot, the remake takes time to give us more information about our setting, along with a wholly new piece of music. Here, our field of stars is replaced with a beautifully rendered overhead of the destroyed landscape of the planet, with atmospheric wind noises and choirs singing ambient, discordant notes. There's a little more musical direction here, as the voices shift over one another, trying to resolve that dissonance. And with one orchestra hit, we hear Sephiroth's theme. The choir only teases us with his theme, repeating the first two lines of One Winged Angel. burning inside with a violent anger. Already, this soundtrack has told us what a heavy role he's going to be playing in the remake. As we lower down into the city, seeing life and movement, the piece picks up this same vibrance with a non-Western folk drumbeat. The ominous chorus takes a back seat to the sounds of a city and its people, living. But that ominous subtext is always there. Waiting. Once again, the tubular bell signals our shift in tone. The detritus spewed by the Mako reactor mirrors the star field of our original opening, and we return to familiarity. These high strings and the melody echoed on the piano are as faithful to the original as this opening shot of Aerith kneeling in the alleyway. But Sephiroth's theme sneaks in here again, even as the violins continue the variations of that initial melody. 
This takes the original, hopeful, uplifting feeling of this track and casts it in a sinister light. As Aerith stands, checks behind her, and flees her spot of reverence. Her sense of constantly being followed is shown in her actions, the camera angles, and in this ever-present theme that invades our opening sequence. As she cradles this crushed flower close to her, Sephiroth's theme drops away, and we lift into the sky with the full fanfare of the opening. Again, this sequence is incredibly faithful, but lengthened ever so slightly to give us more time to take in the sights of the beautifully rendered city. We have a stronger military march in the drums, but we maintain some of the original's synth tech feel with that cascading sparkle pulled right from the original. This fanfare blends seamlessly into the driving baseline rhythm of the bombing mission and marks the loop point for the rest of this area. In keeping with the cinematic feel of the opening, this music persists between area changes, through battles and victory resolutions, and through conversations with your teammates. In the remake, this is the point they have chosen to write two separate pieces. Rather than a seamless transition, the music pulls back gently from the fanfare and fades to nothing, leaving us with an intimate moment with this poor, ill-fated guard. <coughs> Instead of that driving bass rhythm, the strings pick up the initial movement line. The music returns. Let the beatdown commence! <coughs> Watch as Cloud leaps down from the train during the string trills. The moment he hits the ground, the music picks up. This whole pre-rendered cutscene was generated outside of gameplay and allowed the composers to score their music to ensure the right beats fall on exactly the right frame. This style of writing music is referred to as scored to picture, and it's done a lot in film, but it often isn't possible in video games. True cutscenes are expensive to produce, but Square Enix has the budget for it. In fact, the original opening, Bombing Mission, was the first song ever to be crafted for the game, and was written by Nobuo Uematsu with the finished opening movie in hand. As we finally transition from cutscene into gameplay, the music follows us. As in the original, Bombing Mission plays through our combat and traversal of the area. The music is ducked as tutorial tips slide in, but otherwise remains uninterrupted. The remake's Bombing Mission is very faithful to the original, but it has been extended by almost a full minute. There's a lot of variation in the tension of the remake, including this section that drops to almost nothing but a metallic percussion clatter. It grows by slowly layering piano, then low strings, then woodwinds, and the drums pick up. Finally, high strings and a woodwind trill, and we're back to our original theme. There's one other section of the remake that departs from the original, and it happens just before the loop point. The horns build on each other, doing a call and response with a familiar theme. It's small, 
but it's a variation of the sweeping melodic main theme of Final Fantasy VII. The rhythm and general direction of the melody are the same, but the starting point and size of those leaps varies to feel at home in the big, energy-driven bombing mission. We finish our variations on the main theme and come back around to the beginning once more, with that driving piano bass line. In the original game, this loop would take us all the way to the next area, but there are a few complications with that here. A huge challenge in rescoring Final Fantasy VII for the remake was the addition of full voice acting. When the dialogue is all boxes of text on the screen, the music has nothing to compete with. But when we add spoken dialogue, the music competes for our attention. And we can't just have Barrett yell at us over the horns anytime we need to know something. Say that again! <clears throat> Save the screaming for later. This is solved with a bombing mission variant that isn't on the soundtrack. As we approach the team, Wedge raises his hand and we get a quiet punctuation of horns. This musical stinger can interrupt the piece almost anywhere, so it doesn't matter how long we spent meandering about staring at the pretty pictures, looking for secret treasure boxes, forgetting how to fight, perusing the menu options for cool things, debating on whether or not to invert the camera, because really it's more cinematic that way, but incredibly obnoxious to adjust. This stab will be waiting there for us, so we can transition into this quieter variant, making room for dialogue. This rhythmic metallic echo is present at the low point of the bombing mission track, but it's missing the quick, even-paced bass notes and some of the higher frequencies. It's punctuated with that low string riff, but it's not allowed to grow so long as we continue talking to our team. As we end this animatic and control is returned to the player, a clarinet, oboe, and flute pick up that call and response of the main theme we heard on the horns in the full bombing mission track. This drops back down to the bass percussion track and loops as long as it needs to for us to finish with our team talk. This treatment allows the game to continue the sense of music continuously playing, but gives plenty of space for the voices of the characters to take our full attention. It also keeps up the tension of this bombastic opening by maintaining that percussion track. Quiet does not equal low energy here. They don't hide the transition back to our full bombing mission track. A simple crossfade leads us back to the low point of the track, and back into the action we go. True to the original, the music carries us all the way to the Mako reactor. When we enter, the music fades, and our screen fades to black for transition. The whole first section of the game, everything is such a lovingly crafted callback to the original. From cheeky dialogue prompts, to the layout of the levels, to the way the music is orchestrated, very little is reinvented. The changes made are done to add context or complexity where it just wasn't possible in the original game. But divergence is inevitable, and we get our first taste of it in the controversial rescoring of the Mako Reactor. See you next time. <laughs>